All right, guys, I'm gonna give you all a quick walkthrough of my pressure washing trailer. Been running this setup for almost a year now. Uh, this is my third rig that I've built personally. Uh, this one is a load trail, 14K trailer. Overall, it's 28 foot. The deck is eight and a half by 24, so got plenty of room. The main reason I went with such a big trailer, um, I have a lot of accounts that require scaffolding or extra ladders, extra equipment. So having that extra space right there in the middle and from the machines up to the front gives me a lot of storage space. Um, you can see I got six gas cans here. They each hold six gallons because you can fill those things all the way up. Um, four gas and two diesel. Uh, two Hydromax, eight gallon a minute hot water machines. They are 3,600 PSI, but by the time you run 200 foot of hose, you're closer to that 3,000 mark, which is plenty. Um, this box here holds all of our fitting boxes and spare pumps and your daily spare parts. Moving back a little bit, that's a 35 gallon water tank. Uh, we use that to rinse out the electric pump at the end of the day. Um, you can see some more storage there, just buckets for trash or gutter clean out, um, extension poles, shovels for shoveling up mud and dirt in a driveway, stuff like that. Got a little hand rinse station. Um, it's a 525 gallon water tank. When you're running two eight gallon minute machines, it's, it's crazy. If you don't have a good hookup from the house, then you will run through that water a lot quicker than you might imagine. Um, a lot of people get away with a, a 325, but personally, I've ran out on plenty of jobs um, that have had decent water pressure. So I would highly recommend if you're gonna run too hot water with high volume, you might wanna get a 525. Um, two cone holders for commercial jobs or gas stations, anything we do uh, at night or when somebody's still open. Um, that's 125 gallons of chlorine and soap and water mix there for roofs and post treating concrete. That's a 55 gallon degreaser tank. That's also a mix. That's just a little electric pump we use. Um, it runs through about 275 foot of soft wash hose, which is about as much as you can fit on this reel. Um, typically this is mounted up a little bit different, but we swapped one out late the other night. So that's how I'm running that one for right now. Moving on to the back, we've got three more hose reels back here. Um, each has 200 foot of hose, uh, two high pressure and one garden hose. I don't really use the highest quality garden hose, but I mean, for how long they last, I mean, definitely worth using it. So moving on from the back, See another shot of how the tanks are kind of laid out. They're all symmetrical in the middle. Um, I just give it a little bit cleaner look. Uh, this is a gas soft wash machine, which is no longer operating. Um, I'm actually about to just take it off because this thing has become very costly to repair. Parts are hard to find. When it breaks down, it just takes forever to, to fix. Whereas a soft wash pump like that electric one, uh, you can swap that out in about 90 seconds. So it's just a lot more cost effective, time efficient, and gets you back working a lot faster. Um, you don't get quite the reach, but honestly, uh, I'm not complaining about it just because what I'm getting off that electric pump. Um, these two buckets are mounted down. I usually keep a pump up sprayer in each one or keep some dirty rags or anything from wiping houses down. Um, that's a high pressure hose, just extra, just laying there. Um, this is the 65 gallon SH tank that is just made for downstreaming. You can see I run the whip line from the front over the tank right here. So that way it just makes a little bit better angle for dropping the tube down in there. Um, and then when we run hot water, I'll usually just pull that down and let it hang. Um, I add a little hose right there. So if I need to fill up a bucket or a pump up spray or anything with SH, I can do that pretty easily. Um, there's a better shot of the storage and the gas tanks there. Uh, keep the wands underneath this machine here. Never had any issue with them moving. Uh, two four-footers and one five-footer. 
and I've got some short, just little snope guns over there in that box. Um, two 20 inch classics. I've had this classic for three years now and I've only had to change the swivel and the bar one time. So needless to say, it's it's gotten its money back 10 times over. Um, here's a little rack I had on my last trailer. I actually had the hose reels up on it. It was on the back. It was a 20 foot landscape trailer, but it just had way too much weight. So I ended up reusing this. So sometimes I'll put the ladder, that gorilla ladder on top of it. Sometimes I'll put some uh, scaffolding platform boards up here. Um, just kind of it's a catch-all for any extra stuff we have to take on jobs um, when it's all full it's about i'd say 12 to 14 thousand pounds depending on how much stuff i have on there besides the normal equipment i pull it with a 2012 f-250 um, it usually does never never is unhooked from the trailer I've had it for about four years, bought it with 30,000 miles. It's up to 170 and pretty much all those have been pulling a trailer of some sort and I've never had one mechanical failure. So I cannot complain about the truck pulling this big of a trailer every single day. Besides what you see, there's not much extra to this trailer. It is big. Um, it is big for a reason. Like I said, I like to make sure I can carry all the stuff we, we need to a job on the trailer. That way, if there's the outside chance I need to unhook and we need to go somewhere, I can leave all of our equipment there. I don't need to un, unload the truck. But if y'all have any questions, uh, you can comment or I'll leave my email and maybe I can help y'all with y'all's build or if y'all got a question on how to rearrange your trailer um, I've become pretty efficient as far as just on a job site, how to flow um, and how to get stuff done the easiest way possible because I, I try to build and fix everything myself. So sometimes it might not look as pretty as somebody that spends six hours on it, but at least you know how to fix something when you're out on a job because that's really what matters. Um, if you break down and you've got two hours of work left, but it's nine o'clock at night, nobody's gonna be able to come out there and, and fix it for you. So that's kind of why I've tried to set it up my own way and it's treated me pretty well. Um, honestly, three and a half years, a lot of this equipment is, has been the same, even though the trailers have changed. Uh, these are all pretty much, pretty much the same equipment. Um, that machine on this side is the original machine I've had for three and a half years. And it's honestly been just solid as a rock. So I will keep buying those for the price point. Great warranty. But like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to uh, look at comments and uh, I'll check my emails pretty much daily. Anyway, so uh, yeah, hope you all enjoyed it.